Hi, I'm Dala, and welcome to the final episode of Performance Tuning for the Leaf. In this episode, we will be uh, doing the resolver coding, and we will be installing a CAN bridge, and we will also do some testing and see if we get some better 0 to 100 times. So, let's get started. Okay, first of all, let's tackle the resolver coding. Uh, here I have uh, Leaf Spy, but this is an old version. Uh, I just updated it on my phone here. And uh, I'm gonna lay over a screenshot so you can see this better because this phone is a bit messed up. But uh, basically, uh, Leaf Spy can now read the resolver ID or resolver offset. Uh, I've spoken to the creator of Leaf Spy and sent him some logs, uh, the one that we took all the way back uh, in episode 0 on this series. So Leaf Spy can now read it, and like you saw in that screenshot, this inverter has the offset 76. The newer inverter does not use all the numbers, they only use the first number. So that makes this all a bit uh, different. <laughs> Let's see how it works. But um, now that we can use Leaf Spy for reading, we can't yet use Leaf Spy for writing. That feature is still going to be implemented. But by the time you're watching this video and thinking about doing this upgrade yourself, uh, Leaf Spy will most likely support writing this resolver offset also. But uh, since this version is not yet available, I'm gonna be doing the writing manually. So now I'm gonna take out a laptop. Okay, I have the laptop hooked up to uh, Carcan and I am monitoring the bus and um, now I'm gonna try sending. I have this uh, file that I made. Uh, this all will be irrelevant soon, but uh, I'm gonna put it up on screen here and I'm gonna take a screenshot of it. But uh, basically this will all be integrated into Leaf Spy soon, so you don't have to worry about this. And um, now I'm just gonna send those commands. I'm gonna use this um, traffic generator function, uh, this uh, replay log thing that is built into CanRunner. And uh, here I am going to select uh, this file that I made. It's called write ID. And, um, the only important one is, is the one in the beginning here, 86. Uh, I'm hoping that the inverter will just ignore the other values that I'm going to be sending. But um, fingers crossed. Oh my god, it worked. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it now says 86 instead of that 77 number. So we did it. We now have the correct offset written into the car. So. Uh, now it is safe to drive it, so I'm gonna go for a ride. Okay, so I'm out driving. I still have that check EV system warning light, but uh, we will ignore that for now. Let's get to that later. We need a can bridge for that. But I've uh, headed to my usual place, uh, this private road, and I don't know how good is that's gonna show up on camera, but this road is uh, 100 km per hour max, so that's perfect. I'm just gonna go out on this road, accelerate up to 100, and uh, I'll use a GPS app on my phone in order to see the, the time. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, I won't film this. Um, it, it's very boring with the standard 80 kW. Those of you will, with a leaf know how slow this is. So I will just cut to the results now. Okay, so time to fix the software. And uh, let's open the glove box. I have already prepared this uh, a few months ago. Uh, here is a CAN bridge that is attached between the VCM and the inverter. So now I'm gonna hook up my laptop to this and uh, we will start writing some code. Okay, here's some great progress. Check this out. No more check engine light! Oh, let's turn that off so I don't get copy straight. Uh, so, uh, we had some discussion on the Open Inverter forum, and uh, uh, there was a user there called Dr. Prox that said that the missing message uh, for the inverter was a 4B9 message. So I just created some code here. Uh, you will all have access to this in the GitHub repo that's linked in the description. 
But the code here, uh, it basically generates this message and uh, it loops through the content that it usually should have. It's just some still alive message, something like that. So, now we don't have a check EV system warning light anymore. Now we can get to actually tuning some performance out of this. Okay, so I just um, updated the software and now I'm gonna go for the first drive. I'm gonna turn around here to this road. I've set the multiplier to 1.3 so that all uh, torque messages get uh, multiplied a bit so that we can get the full range up to 110 kilowatt. Uh, it's raining a bit. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna just push the pedal to the floor now. Whoa! Holy! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, wow! I almost broke the camera there. I had to make sure that it wasn't a fluke, that it was just the rain that was causing the wheel spin. So I've set the code so that I can switch between eco mode, which does um, no changes to the uh, newton meter demand messages. But then in drive mode it, it modifies it and wow, I did a few pulls but I couldn't get any traction. It was just wheel spin and wheel hop. Uh, so the testing, the how much the 0 to 100 uh, times have improved, uh, it will have to wait until some day that it doesn't rain. So wow, I'm going to go uh, in and upload this code to GitHub so someone else can start to take it into use and improve it. And um, yeah, let's cut to another day where it doesn't rain. Wow, this project went so much better than I had anticipated. Uh, it's so much fun driving this tuned leaf around. Uh, I think we're entering a new era of ele electric vehicle modification for sure. So if you want to do this to your own leaf, um, start by getting a battery upgrade. Uh, then you get the newer inverter and uh, a can bridge and my code. And the code is available for free on GitHub. So check it out, link in the description. Uh, Closing words, uh, let's see if we can fit the 160 kilowatt inverter later on. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that video later. Uh, but again, massive thanks to all my Patreon supporters. This type of research and development wouldn't be possible without you. So thank you so much for supporting me via, via Patreon. You guys are awesome. See you in the next video. Bye.